we now welcome on board Sudeep Shah as well as Nuresh Mirani and find out which way the market is headed next. And Nisham Maheshwari too joins in on the fundamentals. Nuresh, if I could get in a quick word from you. Well, for the Nifty, uh, you know, in blue sky territory, we're at an all-time high. But when will the Nifty Bank play catch up, you think? So we are getting the first indications of Nifty Bank playing a catch up. We are seeing ICICI Bank come in touching distance of an all time high. Now in the bank Nifty, the two largest weights are HDFC Bank and uh, ICICI Bank that comprises almost 50% of the index. We've seen uh, day before and yesterday a recovery in HDFC Bank. And now if ICICI Bank takes a lead, because if it breaks out about 1050, an ideal move would be closer to 1150, 1200 on that one. So if that happens, we take uh, the dash towards 48,000 also on the bank Nifty. So overall, HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank both look promising. And ICICI breaking 1050 would be a new all-time high. So that would be a clear leadership move. So expecting banks to take leadership once we get a confirmation from ICIC. Waiting for those banks to take the lead. But Sadeep, if I can come to you on auto stocks. Uh, auto index was itself sitting at record high level and then we saw a lot of these individual names also moving around. Today, of course, you also have Bajaj Auto, which is reacting to that record date that they have announced for the buyback, which stands at February 29th. Uh, which stocks do you think have further steam left within the auto pack? Hey, good afternoon, Anisha. Uh, see, what I feel is that auto index, uh, which has broken out on Friday above its previous uh, all-time high, uh, it's, it's, uh, we are seeing the the move uh, consolidating and uh, strengthening even at higher levels. And with the likes of Maruti, Bajaj, Auto, both outperforming today, I feel uh, the outperformance in both these names could continue uh, going forward in the next week also. And specifically, if we come to Bajaj, Auto now, the charts are quite stretched there, but the momentum is upbeat. So I feel that uh, dips uh, towards 82, 80, 8300 in the next few sessions uh, should be used to go long from a trading perspective, uh, from a positionally, from an investment perspective, I feel uh, there should not be uh, any heavy, uh, like, if, uh, there should not be any, uh, from the current levels, I feel it, it could uh, witness some kind of uh, sideways uh, action. So I feel the dips should be used from a long-term perspective, but uh, from a trading perspective, 8300, 8350 zones are a good level to enter. Okay, let's welcome on board Nishal Maheshwari as well. Nishal, hi, good afternoon. Uh, good day for the headline indexes, but just wondering when you think the banking rally is going to make a move and especially the underperforming private banking names. You think the worst could be behind and these dips should be bought now, case in point being an HDFC bank? Afternoon. Uh, yes, I think uh, it's been a quite, a, uh, quite a wait actually for banks to perform. Uh, it has been uh, at these prices, I think they are all uh, screaming by, I would say, use the word screaming. I think whether it is HDFC Bank, ICIC Bank, I think the performances have been pretty strong. Uh, as far as the macros are also concerned, I think uh, they are also behaving very well. So, yes, uh, uh, I think so. Banks are a good place to be in. Are a good place to be in. But what about platforms like PB Fintech? Um, of course, Paytm is a bit of a uh, dangerous bet right now. But apart from that, Zomato has been seeing good amount of commentary coming from the brokerages. The management is fairly positive. And for PB Fintech, there is this added boost of the composite uh, license as well. Um, like anything within this space, Nishan? Yeah, I think both these stocks, basically, which we are talking about, Zomato and PB Fintech, uh, that's been my favorites basically in the whole space and uh, the logics uh, have been basically that both are market leaders and it takes a lot of time and effort and money to actually get into this kind of pole positions for both these stocks. Uh, very clear business uh, model, uh, very clear uh, revenue streams and uh, I think uh, with uh, after they got listed, uh, they became very clear about saying how the profitability is going to get achieved. So I think market is uh, definitely rewarding them for that. Other, uh, I think, Paytm and all, I think uh, one has to get its arms around, basically, especially about the business model itself. Right, okay, that's the take coming in on Paytm in the last three months alone. The stock has lost about almost 60-odd percent. That's what the data is indicating. Just looking at a couple of movers today, 
Uh, there's Delta Corp, which is up about 5%. There's Balrampur Chini, which has made quite a breakaway move, almost a 5% tear coming in there. Dixon is holding up 4.5%. JMR Infrastructure and then Grassim is the one which is scaling up quite nicely in trade. Nurish, let's get you in on the charts of uh, Balrampur Chini, considering that seems to be the leader amidst the sugar pack. Of course, this trigger why you're seeing the move on the stock. But what's next on the cards on the charts? So, Balambur Chini has been sideways for the last almost uh, two, two and a half years. The stock used to be 400 back in 2021, and we are still uh, struggling around the 400 mark. In between, there was a dash above 440, and post that, the whole sugar sector topped out. So, as of now, till the time it starts, doesn't start sustaining above 400, 420. Uh, the trend remains uh, sideways only. So, uh, Balambur Chini would still wait it out. I think we are still not out of uh, uh, the sideways trend for uh, sugars as such of the sideways trend but uh, Nishal what about OMCs as a space of course the likes of HPCL, IOCL, BPCL have seen a massive re-rating and now the end of the curve names the likes of MRPL, Chennai Petro, these stocks are also reacting supreme Petro. Do you think there is a bit of an over exuberance now given the kind of undervaluation or uh, that these sectors and stocks were getting this kind of re-rating was just on the anvil? So, uh, yeah, I think so, basically. I think it is a good time to take away profits from most of these uh, companies. Uh, yes, uh, oil prices are benign, and that's why you are having this kind of margins uh, in, in the product. Uh, but uh, there is no clarity, basically, if and when the oil prices goes up, who bears the losses. So I think uh, uh, these, these are all good trading bets. I don't think so. One should make them as a part of the portfolio. Uh, and I think this is a good time to actually take away profits. If you're calling it a trading bet, let me take it across to Nuresh to get a sense as to one should make a bet into these names or not, Nuresh? Uh, which names would it be? It's Chennai Petro, MRPL and the other rest of the OMCs. So, time to take some profits at least uh, in the refiners uh, like Chennai Petro as well as MRPL. They've gone up uh, one way, they've uh, continued in the momentum. Other hand, BPCL is something, uh, BPCL, HPCL, for now, they could get into a pause. We may not see a sharper correction as such, but you want to be buying into this trend in BPCL because BPCL has broken out about 550, which was last seen in 2017. So out here, you want to be buying on dips closer to 550, 600. Whether we go there and test it would be a tough call to take, but you don't want to be looking at it as an exit on a longer term basis. Yes, in the short term, looking at a pause in uh, all OMCs. Right, okay, on that note, we'll take a very quick break. We're still holding up on to our gains. 22,250 on the Nifty Futures right now. Smart positive breath led by infrastructure, textile, telecom and oil and gas names. We'll take a break, continue tracking markets on the other side. Okay, some commentary coming in from the Coal India chairman as well saying may miss the FI24 guidance. I'm not quite sure if I caught that correctly. We will wait for those flashes in just a second from now. But Nishal, uh, you know, clearly the entire energy space, and I'm going to leave oil and gas aside of that, but commodities, uh, yeah. So may miss FI24 production goal of 780 million tons by 10 million tons is what the Coal India chairman is quoted at saying. Just wanted to understand, Nishal, where is it that you stand within, say, metals, coal, the other energy pocket, X oil and gas? So, I'm saying, uh, let's look at, uh, let's try and break it up. Uh, yeah, demand-wise, I think, uh, pretty strong, basically, because industrial uh, output is increasing. We are looking at around 7% kind of a growth on the GDP. So, definitely, I think, demand-wise, there is no not much of a challenge. Now, let's look at the supply side. I think there we are going to definitely see challenges, actually, because... Uh, 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 what all we are seeing right now, the orders being placed, all these production basically, especially on the uh, coal-based plants, is all going to come in the next three to four or five years. Uh, so we are uh, that way more positive on companies basically which are more green oriented and are uh, strongly uh, betting on that. Uh, so something like a Tata Power, NTPC, these are as far as the uh, uh, producers are concerned. Uh, but uh, even uh, the transmission companies are our favorites. So these are the two spaces basically which we like. 
but I think the equipment guys have run much ahead of its course. So we would want to actually recommend saying take profits in Behel uh, 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 kind of companies. That's the take coming in on some of these metals and commodities plays. Uh, but Sudeep, if I can get you in and talk to you about the chart check for LNT, because that one is of course lower today on account of the news flow that uh, Aramco might be taking back some of its bids. Uh, it was expected to be very beneficial for LNT because they were going to get a large chunk of it. That's not happening now. And let's uh, talk a bit more about Coal India because that is continuing to fall as well. At what level would you be a buyer? So, Deep, the question is for you. Yeah, Anisha, if you see the charts of LNT, the the uh, the stock is in a downtrend since uh, beginning of the month. Since uh, February first week, we have seen the uh, witnessing resistance around 3500, uh, 3530 levels, and now it is uh, even sustaining below its 20-day exponential moving average. Uh, today also it has retested that, but it is unable to uh, cross and close above that, right, as of now while we are talking. So I feel that the trend is still on the downside. One should not be doing bottom fishing in LNT. Uh, wait for a dip up to 30 to 80, 30 to 70, which is the prior support uh, from a medium term standpoint. So 30 to, uh, 30 to 80, 30 to 60 would be a good zone uh, to enter uh, in LNT. The take on LNT, Coal India, and some of the other big buzzes as well. In the meantime, just taking a look at some of the other gainers from the broader market. Take a look at JBM Auto. That's seen quite a bit of spike of late. Rajesh Exports is the other one that has been coming up on radar often time again. Um, it's up 15% today. Walkart is up around 13%. Force Motors is the other one. But just taking a leaf out of that, Nishal Pharma as a space has done very well in the quarter gone by. Surprised quite a few people. Saw quite a few upgrades as well. Uh, do you still believe that bulk of the rally is left? Or there, you know, or you're a bit too late to get on the bus now. No, I think basically the easy money has got made in pharma. So the thing that uh, USS started doing well. So all the companies basically they are getting price increases out in the US, and I think for a couple of quarters now that is showing up in the results. So the easy money, the turnaround in pharma has happened. Now you have to go very very stock specific. And uh, uh, I think uh, in, in case of uh, definitely there is a lot more opportunity as far as some of these stocks are concerned. So we prefer the domestics uh, more than the uh, uh, international names. And uh, obviously, uh, though I think Sun is uh, been uh, a top pick and that continues to be a part, both domestic as well as international, uh, continues to be pretty well, uh, doing pretty good. Uh, the other space which we like within the pharma or a broader healthcare space is the uh, hospital. I think that space is doing pretty well and uh, has a very, very strong visibility. Domestic Sun Farm, of course, has clearly been a favorite and has done quite well for the investors as well. But Nuresh, I wanted to come and, uh, come and talk to you about, let's say, a GBM Auto, which is up 15%, Force Motors is up 12%, and you also have Electra Green Tech, which is perking up quite good on the charts. And add to that list maybe a couple of other names from the, pharma space, uh, from the auto space as well. Uh, within these names, what is your top bet? So, uh, out of these names, uh, at least in the JBM Auto and Electra, it would be time to actually book profits because they are no more small companies. They're all they've all become 25, 30 thousand crores market cap after the move, and uh, overall seems like an over participation in the near term. So that's a uh, time to book profits. In terms of uh, pharma, clearly Dr. Reddy is is the new leader. We've seen that move uh, happen in Sun Pharma. Now Dr. Reddy is a breakout, so that would be the first one. Second would be uh, to look at dips in granules India. That's given a breakout into new all-time highs. And third would be to look at a basket of smaller names like Alembic Pharma or Natco Pharma on dips, because those have also given structural breakouts. So we are seeing a shift in terms of uh, uh, the leadership in terms of pharma. It started off with uh, Aurobindo, Lupin taking lead from the bottom and continuing well. Then we saw Sun Pharma, and now it could be Dr. Reddy's, which could take pole position, and then the rest of the names.
Talking about Dr. Eddie's, uh, Numura had actually written a note on it today. Remember, there was that entire news flow over the weekend that Novartis's India business has been put under strategic review, and there were reports doing around that Dr. Eddie's could one of be uh, could be one of the strong contenders to pick up this business. Numura, for instance, believed that it would have made strategic sense for Dr. Eddie's to pick up the stake, even though the valuation is high. The value accretion will be there in long term, driven by the cost reduction and already the partnerships that the two company has. In fact, it. Let me bring on board my colleague Shishti as well to explain to us what exactly is happening at Novartis and could Dr. Eddie's really be a, a pole contender for this one. Uh, Shishti, take it away. Well, yes, indeed, Dr. Eddie's has come out with this clarification, but the period company of Novartis, that is Novartis AG, has come out with a notification announcing a strategic review of its Indian subsidiary, that is Novartis India Limited, wherein they currently hold a little over 70% stake in Novartis India and they do mention that they are assessing the shareholding of Novartis AG in Novartis India Limited and the strategic review will include the assessment of the shareholding, though there is no assurance that the strategic review of Novartis India will be completed in 2024 itself. And definitely the media reports are suggesting that Dr. Radies is in the race to acquire the stake in Novartis India. But Dr. Radies has also clarified that there are no such events as of now which needs a disclosure and they would not like to comment on market specu uh, speculation. But Nomura has come out with a note saying that this could make a sense for Dr. Radies and they do see a strong possibility of Dr. Radies pursuing Novartis India. Dr. Radies is best place to acquire Novartis stake in Novartis India. Why so? Because they already have an existing distribution partnership with Novartis India as well as um, for the upcoming brands this could make a strategic sense for Dr. Reddy's uh, other than that they do mention that the valuation though is high as of now but the value accretion will be driven by the cost reduction and if at all they further go with some acquisition in some of their brands this would strengthen Dr. Reddy's India portfolio as well as would get additional brands in the in neurology as well as oncology space they also mentioned that all these products could be a low margin product that the but the volume could drive the business for Dr. Radies and that's why they have come out with a note and said that this could make a sense for Dr. Radies as of now but the company has denied that there are no such events that needs a disclosure at this point in time and that's why both the companies are in focus but it's clear that Novartis India is on the block and there could be some players coming in. Okay, thanks, Shristi, for that. Take a look at Yes Bank. There is a big block that has happened there, perhaps, because the volumes have suddenly perked up on Yes Bank. Uh, the stock has actually moved lower, so uh, maybe a bit of a large transaction is what has taken place. We'll try and get more details if it's actually true or not. But Nishal, do you track this one closely, Yes Bank? Because if I pull up a one-month chart, you'll see that there have been great traction and buying yeah. interest on Yes Bank, but a few overhangs as well. So, uh, no, we don't cover it basically, but we have done some uh, work earlier basically and uh, doesn't seem to be uh, uh, going anywhere, if I use that. Uh, it's it's at a 0.4% ROA and I think our best case scenario basically we try and work it around. It should be like 0.7, 0.8% uh, ROA in the next three to four years. Uh, so, I'm saying uh, these prices... Uh, it's already, I think, two or three times booked, so it's 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 difficult to actually take a call on Yes Bank at these prices. The view on Yes Bank has already run up quite a bit, so now just be very careful if you're taking further bets on that one. Thank you, Nishal, for making time and speaking with us. Um, in the meantime, let me quickly take the closing trade ideas from our uh, technical guests, Sudeep as well as Nuresh. Sudeep, you go first. Yeah. So the first. Uh trading idea would be GMR uh, airports infra. Now, uh, we've seen uh, the last few days the stock consolidating at higher levels uh, between 86 and uh, 89. And it was kind of outperforming the other mid caps when there was a last uh, last week, there was some all in the mid caps in the beginning of the week. So here, once again, the stock is doing well on the daily as well as the weekly charts and it's sustaining above all its uh, important moving averages right now as of now uh, while we're speaking. So I feel uh, the stock can be bought with a stop loss of 89 and a target of uh, 99 on the upside. The second stock would be from the cement space. Now, last uh, few sessions, we have seen the cement space doing really well. Uh, we have uh, 
So one by one, we have seen uh, ACC, Ambuja, uh, all these names uh, doing well and uh, breaking out of their uh, consolidation. So now we are expecting uh, Grasim to do the uh, same. Grasim has been in a consolidation uh, phase since last three months. And today, uh, we have seen some addition of uh, open interest on the long side, as well as the volumes are uh, pretty much uh, high in Grasim on the long side today. So I feel uh, the overall structure is intact. The the charts are good on the daily as well as the weekly time frame. And uh, this uh, stock could be bought with a stop loss of 21.30 on the downside and 22.40, 22.60 on the upside uh, could be the potential targets. Taken, but uh, quickly let me take it across to Nuresh as well. Nuresh, I want your view on Yes Bank specifically and then your BTSD ideas. So, Yes Bank, uh, uh, the view is uh, we've overdone in the short term and the current price does not uh, uh, signify what sort of market cap it has come. At peak, it went to almost 90, 95,000 crores market cap at 30, 32 levels. And this is the market cap which it had at 400 rupees pre the fiasco uh, without the dilution. So, uh, it's at uh, a market cap which will uh, not make sense going forward in terms of uh, returns. And we've already gone, gone to those levels. So it's an avoid at current levels as well. ICICI Bank is the uh, closing trade which I look at. The stock is very close to making an all-time high. Over the last uh, two months, it has made multiple attempts around 1,040, 1,050. Sustaining about 1,050 would be a quick breakout. So looking at a target price of 1,090 to 1,150 in the short term. In on ICICI Bank, time now to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. Last 30 minutes of the trading session coming up right now.